Welcome to the Venture Briefing at ETH. It's wonderful to have you all. Um, we have one hour uh, set for the session, so let's get this going. Um, just a reminder, um, please keep your microphones muted until um, you are asked to speak. Um, keep your video switched on if you could so that we can all see each other's faces. And finally, um, if you have questions uh, during the session, uh, use the chat box to write your questions and then we'll make sure to get back to them. All right, um, to give you a brief overview about what, what to expect, uh, today we are going to introduce to you like a little bit of the infrastructure that you have at ETH for entrepreneurs. Um, we'll also specifically talk about financial support that is available to science founders who start spin-off companies. And then um, we'll talk, uh, yeah, then we'll basically hand over to the speaker of the day, um, Awa Dayan, the founder and CEO of Nemosia. Uh, you will have lots of opportunity to ask questions, so take advantage. Um, yeah, and then uh, I hope we can we can cover that all until 1 p.m. Okay, objectives of the of the day is um, we want to give you an introduction to what uh, support you can get to get your company going. Yeah, um, so where, whatever stage you're at, I'm assuming a lot of people of you have not yet started yet, which is absolutely great because then all of all of the adventure is still in front of you. Um, and uh, we want to tell you like where you can get the money, where you can get uh, the coaching, where you meet the right people. Uh, we want to inspire you. And uh, yeah, finally, uh, especially talk about what's available from the Gebert Ruf Foundation. To start, uh, I'd like to ask you to introduce yourself. Um, let me start a quick poll right here. If you could take a few seconds to answer these two questions. You see it? Yeah, I see that answers are coming in. So let's get it, give it 15 more seconds. Please finish up now. Fantastic. Thanks for all your answers. Um, I want to show you. So what we see is most of you are, you are from uh, university, which is unsurprising. I saw the guest list today. Most of you are actually from ETH, uh, which is wonderful. Um, and a lot of you uh, have a, a startup idea or are still in the orientation phase. Again, that's wonderful because um, yeah, we can address all of that and our maybe you could, you could uh, keep that in mind when addressing the audience. All right, uh, so Um, I want to give a big thank you to our great partners here at ETH, uh, especially ETH Student Project House, ETH Entrepreneur Club, and Unicorn Labs. Those are fantastic institutions and student organizations supporting you on campus with uh, the infrastructure, labs, a network, uh, access to alumni. And yeah, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit more about that. So I'm very happy um, to introduce you to 
Ivan of the ETH Student Project House. Ivan, are you here? Uh, maybe there's still, maybe he has some te technical difficulties because you, we wanted to give you a tour through the ETH Student Project House. So if we can't do it now, uh, I hope we can do it a little later. Just to give you an understanding of what that is, that is basically the maker space on campus. We both have it in the city at, at the traditional campus of ETH, and then also on at Höngerberg. Um, you have various labs available to you there. Um, you have a lot of space for conducting meetings. So if you just if you're just in the stage of uh, starting a project. Um, go there, you can use the infrastructure for free. This is not just available to um, uh, ETH projects, but also like um, if, if you are if you want to team up there, go there, meet the people. And uh, we are going to run the venture challenge at ETH in fall at the student project house. So next wave of um, workshops if we are allowed to have physical events again, will be at the ETH Student Project House. Wonderful place, go there. Um, next is ETH Entrepreneur Club. Is anyone a member of the ETH uh, Entrepreneur Club? Right here. And would you like to introduce the organization? If yes, then you can speak up. If not, then I would just tell you. I mean, it's uh, it's the student organization when it comes to entrepreneurship at ETH. They run more than 20 events per year. Um, all kinds of uh, events like fuck up nights. They have matchmaking events. They have events where it's about um, yeah, technology. And they also have the Rocket Hub, which is a little space of their own where you can also rent office space um, at very affordable terms. So if you're not familiar with Entrepreneur Club yet, visit the website. And if you are at ETH, definitely consider becoming a member. And finally, there's Unicorn Labs. Unicorn Labs is a pretty new organization. So maybe not yet that well known yet, but especially relevant for everyone working on a product, because this student organization um, gives you access to the best engineers and designers and thinkers at ETH who will help you to get your MVP ready, yeah, to to build a little product that you can use to show to investors and to partners, which will dramatically increase your chances of raising the funding you need, um, and also to get the feedback that you need to know uh, that, that you're on the right track. So Unicorn Labs, um, visit their website. All right, and with all of that, I'd like to um, come to the financial support programs that, you're, that are available to you. I will give just a very brief overview, but I encourage you to visit the website. Yeah, um, the main program here that uh, also Awa can talk about is Venture Kick. Venture Kick is a three-stage program. It is. Uh, it looks like this. Um, you pitch three times. First is just when you have an idea based on a concept that uh, yeah that has the highest chances if it's really like deep tech it's not just deep tech but um if you have something that is coming out of science um then this is really the kind of business ideas that that have a have a very high chance to be picked for this program you get a ten thousand um, franc grant just to get going um and you get selected by a jury of real business angels. So um, all of the decisions being made here in the room and also the coaching that you receive is from active investors. 
And this is, I think, the main beauty of this program. Forget about the money for a while, yeah? Uh, just focus on the, on the genius that is in the room when you're sitting there with like 10 of the smartest investors from Switzerland who have all built their successful companies and are now investing in startups. So they are uh, selecting the startups who give, get the grants, uh, but uh, more than that, in the coffee breaks, hey, take the advantage to do networking, exchange business cards, because a lot of these investors will also invest their own funds. Yeah. Um, if, if you are working on a project that is connected to a lab at the university, um, you're working with a professor, for example, then there's more money even available uh, from the InnoBooster program. So on the one hand, you can get 150K for the venture kick, and then you can also get 150K for um, your institutional partner um, through the InnoBooster program. So that, that gives you like 300,000 francs to work with. Um, this is of course the maximum if you if you really if you're really successful applying um yeah there, these three stages are not easy um like definitely take it very very serious to prepare yourself extremely well um and don't be sad if you're if you're not making it there are so many great great companies that that um that succeed even if they if they did not get to the next stage um just being invited for a pitch is a huge opportunity yeah so definitely consider it so um and last not least if anyone is in the room who is from a university of applied sciences there's also another funding available to you um uh, through the first ventures program uh that is again 150k so University of Applied Sciences uh, students here are having the advantage of um, uh, getting access to, to even one more gr um, grant program. All right, so uh, highly, um, highly encourage you to, to apply for all of this. Check out the website. Yeah, I won't go into the details of the application program here, but if you have specific questions, also ask Awa in the in the Q&A. All right, and with that, I'd like to hand over to Awa Dayan. She is the co-founder and CEO of Nemosia. Um, it's an ETH spin-off company that also won Venture Kick. Um, Awa has a super interesting background. Uh, she was born in Senegal and she also grew up there um, to, up to her teenage years. And then she moved to Canada um, just to later move to Europe for her studies. She studied um, computer engineering in Paris. And of all places, I mean, she picked Switzerland to start her company after a brilliant career in consulting. So, I mean, if, if that doesn't give you an idea that Switzerland is an amazing place to be to start a company, uh, I mean, uh, I think this is just the testim testimonial that we want to see. And with that being said, um, Awar, please take the stage. Thank you very much, Rafael, for this introduction. And indeed, guys, you are super lucky uh, to be in Switzerland for um, a static adventure. I, I could not see a better place. So let me share my screen. I have a small presentation that I would like to have, uh, are you able to see it? It works? Okay, fantastic. Yes. So let me have a We can see it. the screen, yes. Perfect. So I'm very happy to be here today and uh, to share our journey so far. We are a very early stage uh, venture. We are actually in the same spot that you were uh, almost a, well, a little bit more than a year ago. So I'm very excited to share what we have done so far. Um, a small intro about myself. As Rafael said, I'm Senegalese and Canadian, and I'm in, in Switzerland for the last 10 years. 
Um, however, for work, I got to I got the chance to travel around the world from Asia, yeah, Africa, North America, and yes, for the last ten years, I'm here now. I have a combined uh, background in engineering and business strategy, uh, principally, and digital transformation, of course, because that's the new sexy things to have. Um, my experience in mainly in management consulting. I was working for Accenture before. Uh, stopping and uh, deciding to go on the more adventurous way and creating our own company. Um, and as you can see in the picture, I have an identical twin sister. I come from a family of six siblings. So you, uh, you learned very early how to do negotiation and how to get your voice heard. So I'm not sure anymore who's who in the picture, but I think I'm on the right hand side because my sister just prefer red color. That's my, only, <laughs> that's my only reasoning behind. But yeah, that is a little bit about me. And uh, now about the Nemozia team, as you can see, we are very diverse. And I think Daniel is also in the call. Um, it all started a little bit over a year ago now when uh, we joined a startup campus from Inno Suisse at ETH actually. Um, where the idea was for all of us to come for some ID if you have um, Hot, like um, business venture idea or wanted to turn our uh, research study into some um, startup. And uh, from there, actually, the idea that I came up with has not been selected. So it, 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 it was very uh, rocky, emotional, but uh, from the feedback that you get, you know that it's not yet mature and you have to pivot, etc. So, But it was very clear for me that I wanted to go into entrepreneurship. Um, and I did not want to go anymore into the normal traditional um, industry uh, job, etc. So I met uh, my, my colleagues. I met uh, first uh, Dr. Ahmed Aida, actually here. The two of them, actually, Hazim and uh, Ahmed, they are the one who were together with the Professor Hamid Tameh from ETH developing this project for about seven years now. Um, and that project was very compelling to me. So to me and to Daniel, basically. And we decided to join their team and see how we can turn their idea into a business concept. So it all started just from there, just making it as a business concept. So as I said, Hahi and Nazim are the, the, the core, hardcore researcher. And Daniel, he is our IT guru and, and uh, more or less marketing expert. And moreover, he's also completing his PhD um, at ETH and uh, looking forward in the in the future, he will be also taking care of all the analytics piece for Nemosia. Yeah. So what we do, maybe I will just quick quickly um, summarize it. We develop a radio tracer for brain imaging. Basically, these radio tracer are used um, with PET system. If you know, like it's similar to MRI or CT, but the difference with PET is that. MRI is just at the organ level, so it can differentiate between a bone and a muscle, but PET goes really to the cellular level. And with this technology, we believe that combined with our tracer, we can have early diagnostic of neurodegenerative disease such as Alzheimer, multiple sclerosis, Park Parkinson, et cetera. And in the picture on the right-hand side, in the bottom, you see uh, our tracer results compare, uh, comparing an Alzheimer patient versus uh, a healthy subject. The vision that we have that is in the next 10 to 15 years to have um, brain check, regular brain scan part of the, the of our regular health check. Because we realize like we, we do health check routine for everything, but the main organ that is controlling the whole body, we left it aside. And most of the time is just when we have symptom of some disease that we pay a specific attention to it. And we want to turn this into more proactive and having early brain scan in order to detect uh, neurodegenerative neurodegeneration earlier and trying to change the tendency. And this goes very well because there are other startups also, even from ETH, uh, for example, Positrigo, who's developing a new generation of PET scanners, which are more smaller um, and um, facilitating also how to make sure we can focus more on the brain, etc. So there are a lot of opportunity there. And we think that by joining force, we can really change uh, the way we approach uh, brain disease today. Yeah. Um, yes. So now if you go a little bit into business side, so maybe today you are at the point where you are still doing your research. That's usually the typical roadmap. You have your research, then you transform it into, dev into uh, development. And here the technology transfer is basically when 
you can call it, you, you, you create the company, you do the incorporation, for example, and have the license or the patented out from ETH transfer uh, to have now this uh, technology uh, patented with a new company. Then you launch your product and hopefully uh, you would be successful in the commercialization and uh, switch the tendency from uh, just uh, cost into profit now. And this is the, 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 the path that everybody hopes. And uh, to talk a little bit more about uh, to talk a little bit more about uh, Nemosia, this is our path so far. As I mentioned before, we have started the research has started back in 2014 with uh, with Professor Hamidame team, and uh, from 2014, I would say um, actually until 2020, it has been mainly funded through grants and and academic uh, competition, etc. So the team has won the ETH silver medal. Uh, they had filed patents in 2018, etc. So, and um, most of the research is actually completed. We are more in a development phase now. So the POC has been done in primates and rodents. And, ex and uh, as I was saying, we had, we started, we all met in the industry startup campus about a, a bit uh, more than a year ago, um, while this development was still going. So. We did the Inno Swiss campus. At the end of the Inno Swiss campus, we really um, we won actually the award for the most innovative idea after the, uh, the startup campus. And from there, it was now the difficult question: What do we do now? Do we do we stop here and wish everybody good luck, or do we turn this really into a venture? Um, we decided to go the adventurous way <laughs> and to turn this into a venture. So starting to have the difficult conversations, uh, how do we set up the team? What are the different milestones? What are the different plans that we want to go? Um, but the first thing that we realized very early on was that we need help because we have no clue. We were all first time entrepreneurs. Um, and yeah, we might have our different skills uh, and expertise in very specific domains, but building a, building a company was totally new to us. And that's why actually we decided to take the, um, the competition, the venture kick competition that we have done um, end of last year, first, it's first stage. We are today in the second stage and preparing for third stage in a month or two, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but in parallel to venture kick, we also uh, did the competition for inner Swiss startup coaching. And what is really amazing in Switzerland, as Rafael was saying, we have really access to world-class expert um, who are helping you for free, basically. And they are so passionate about what they do. So they, they always go over, over normally what was budgeted for them to support you, et cetera. So it's really passionate expert worldwide <laughs> level. And you have the access to them, like almost like friends. They, they are really like, you, I really, really encourage everybody to take advantage on this. This last year has been so fast learning for us. You had to skill up at the amazing level in order to have uh, and in order to have this discussion with a potential investor, but also to go through the different competitions. It, it's really, I, I would recommend to do this. Um, in parallel to Inno Suisse Venture Kick, we also joined uh, the Runway uh, Incubator where we also had access to, to, to coaching. And this coaching is really tailored overall, all the different programs available in Switzerland, they are really tailored to your need um, as like specific industry where you are, the specific stage where you are, um, and what you want to know also the specific mix of skills you have in your team. Today, we are finalizing our FTO, the freedom to operate, um, search, and also the licensing from ETH and planning to incorporate by end of this year. This incorporation decision could be also um, a long discussion. Basically, you have to do it in a strategic manner um, because as soon as you incorporate, you would not be having access to some of the academic grants that you used to have. Now you are a real business and have to compete with other businesses. So you have to make sure that by the time you are ready to incorporate, you would be also having some sort of product that you can commercialize and generate revenue on this while still continuing on your development. Yeah. Okay. Enough a little bit about us. So let's say we talk about you. From the survey, we saw that some of you have an idea, some don't have yet, but it's all actually the same. As long as it's, I think entrepreneurship is more of a mindset. 
um, you having an idea or not. And sometimes your first initial idea will not be necessarily the one that will be converted into a, into a venture. But it's already great that you are here today to, to explore these opportunities. So you have a great idea. The next thing is, well, that means first that you think you understand very well your customer and you, you are able to, to formulate a value proposition that is uh, compiling for him. Um, it could be both ways. You know, we always think about entrepreneurship as solving problem, but not only. Like, um, it's also bringing pleasure. It doesn't have always to be negative or being the superhero. It sometimes is just about bringing pleasure. Uh, I mean, Netflix is a very successful company and it's not solving any problem. It's just about um, bringing sometimes pleasure. So you have to see the, this venture ideas or this, venture, this business um, or the ideation of a business, not just as solving a specific problem, but also bringing joy to customers or potential uh, future clients. Yeah, that means also when you have a great idea, you, you, well, when you have already an idea that you, you, you know how you stand uh, against competition or the existing standard of practice, depending if you're doing research or not. Um, and most importantly, <laughs> if you need investor money, uh, you have to demonstrate how you'd be making money out of your idea. That means you get yourself familiar with all the different revenue models, which could be short term, mid term, long term, etc. But you start to get, you need to start to get familiar with all this different terminology. And uh, if it's coming from uh, ITIHA uh, research project, you also have to have additional considerations such as IP and legal. Yeah, and all of this, you should be in a position to to organize your thought into a business concept or, or business plan, actually. And uh, in the business plan, in addition, you would have to consider what are the additional risk, uh, what's your market size, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just as an example, I want to share our original business concept with Nemozia. So this is really the first first one. It's our first draft. But okay, it's not it's not relevant or it's not as active as today. But it was very close to it's very close to what we're doing now, and it was it's a great tool to organize your thought. Like you see this, it's in three pieces. First, you know what the value you're bringing, what's the potential, that means the market, the competition, how do you stand and how do you execute this, uh, this, uh, this value? So going through this different question already help you to put, uh, to organize your soup and to, to, to first do the original validation yourself, yeah? The business plan overall will be just a more described, uh, described version of your business concept, but the business concept can stay in one page. Then of course, once you have this idea, the next thing is how do you validate this idea? And there is a big misconception on this to keep secret all these great ideas that you have, but that would be the worst uh, advice that somebody can give you. Your idea, you need to talk about it to everybody you know, um, and just to get their feedback. And just on this feedback piece, um, somebody telling you, oh great, this is fantastic, it's not, it does not necessarily mean they are validating your idea. The ultimate test to know that your idea is validated is if somebody is ready to buy it or if somebody is willing to be your guinea pig in order to test it, but some type of commitment to, to, to your idea. So talk about it to, to your network, to as many people as you can, to um, key opinion leaders, to your potential customers and suppliers. And one advice also from um, consulting background, the, don't, when you meet with your customer to talk about this idea, don't jump directly to the product. Listen to them first. Listen to the customer, understand their concept, uh, their context, understand their, uh, their challenge that they are facing, and then formulate your product within this framework. Because if you just jump into a product, they will talk about the product, but they will not create really, you're not creating really the, the linkage um, and the applicability to them. Test and learn, so go out there and, and uh, the way you test, because at this point you make a lot of assumptions and a lot of hypotheses and you need to test them to make sure that you are right, because most of the time you would have a big surprise. Um, for us specifically, we are developing um, radio tracers, that means it has a radioactivity and we were not sure how this will be accepted for people in order to do diagnostics. So we did the online survey um, across the world and cross uh, cross generation, just to see the acceptance and the willingness to pay for people to do this early test in one side, 
and also uh, their feeling or their position toward the radioactivity. Another way to do also validation is to do desk research um, yourself if you have the tool or you can outsource it for us. We outsource it to experts to, to really know what is our market, who are the other players, what the flow, um, and depending also, it's not always about research. Sometimes, let's say you want to develop a new application or software. It's about creating a small pilot that you can give the look and feel to people and they can experiment and, and test. And observation in some other cases, just put it out there, create the MVP. For example, as Rafael was saying, create a, the smallest MVP possible and just put it out there and gather as much feedback as, uh, as, you, may, um, as you may get. And you build from there. Don't sit in one corner and build the entire product and then come back and, and try to launch it. This will not work. You would have big surprise if you do it this way. Yeah, the next very important thing, so once it's validated, is to, to build a team. And this is really, really crucial because you might have the best idea validated, accepted at all this team. But if you don't have the strong team who is ready to go to war with you, basically, because that's what it is. Huh? You will, it, it's not nice and glamorous and romantic. This is dirty and muddy and emotionally very high. You would go through a, um, a lot of different curves and we will have also different uh, view and, and position. And you have to build the trust and the respect from each other to know that uh, you have a common interest and then you have a common objective. And uh, yeah, basically um, it, it's, it's, we have all different backgrounds. So we all have different way of seeing things and doing things. And it's to trust uh, each of your partner in their expertise and to know your own limit. So don't take people who looks like you, take people who will complement the skills that you don't have in order to build the strongest team. And a team, of course, is not just uh, uh, the core team. It's not just the, 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 the small team doing the, the preliminary work. It's not just the executive team, basically. A team is having a strong uh, network of mentor, coach, advisors, uh, your professor to start with, like just to, 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 because some of these guys have done it before a thousand times. They know how to avoid different pitfalls. They, 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 they know what's ahead. They know all the competition that you are not even aware of. And this program from Venture Kick or also coaching a program available here, like these are the best resources that you can have and use them all. For me, like the best advice is use all the different coach that you might have. And the coach are different depending on which stage you are uh, in your venture adventure. So um, at, today, as we, uh, the main coach that we needed is more on the legal. So we passed our our night and days with lawyers and attorneys and how to do negotiation with uh, the different pattern, the licensing, how do you build a, a convertible loan agreement with your, with your investors, and even basic things as just how to, how to build your own shareholder agreement across, uh, across uh, co-founders. Yeah. Um, yeah, so once you have this team, now you go for the financing. So. Um, a fight, like there are so many options available and these are just sample. I didn't put all of this. For example, in addition to this, we could have said uh, crowdfunding, IPO, anyway. So you just need to know what is right for you and there is no one size fit all. You really know, need to build a strategy and this strategy doesn't mean selecting one of these. It could be a mix uh, of this for a specific time and the next, for the next round, you have a different uh, strategy. And when you're talking about financing, you need to know the different option, not just in terms of investor, but in terms of your own strategy. That means, uh, do you know the difference, for instance, between debt and equity? Do you know what is uh, bootstrapping uh, is possible for yourself, etc. So you really need to take the time and really see what is best before going out um, to, to, to the market and trying to, to reach out to these potential investors or banks, et cetera. You really need to first build a strong case, know all your pros and cons, know the different risks because all these questions will be challenged. Basically the investors, the experience that we have, the investors, they are looking for any reason possible to say no. Any reason possible to say no. So 
you need to make sure that you close all these doors before even having a chance to continue on the discussion. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, in order to have these discussions, actually, you need to build um, business uh, literacy. You need to build on your business uh, acumen um, to understand. I had no clue before on a lot of, of this, uh, uh, for example, vesting of shares. And, uh, but you got to build these skills because all the discussions, they will ask you, OK, what's your, uh, what's your turnover in, in five years? Or uh, would you be ready to do a convertible loan? If you don't know what it means, the discussion stop too early, and this is most of the time in your uh, not in your favor. Like, what does what does vesting means? What does uh, PNL like in the term of financial? You need to be able to do, even if it is basic, a financial projection to show uh, the pot potential uh, revenues or the potential costs that you would be having. Um, you need you need to 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 understand what is your break even point by when would you have it what are the other extra uh, other point that you need so this is just a high level i will stop here now so to allow also to have this discussion a little bit more interactive and to take any questions that you might have so how uh, Rafael, how shall we do this? Oh. Is, is there in the chat or okay? I stop here and I let you. Pick hey, up. this is this has been a great, great ride. Thank you very much for this. Uh, I think it really covered all the important points, at least in an overview. And I see that we have yeah a bunch of questions. Um, okay. Let's start with Kanika. Kanika, do you want to speak up? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Ava. That was a lovely, lovely talk. Uh, I had two questions. Uh, one was given that you have a medical project, a medical product that seems to be invasive. Um, what have been the biggest critiques or concerns that you've heard during your pitches from investors and how did you address them so that they are comfortable with it? And second is, who do you want to really sell to? Do you sell to hospitals? Like, who's your customer? And how do you go about approaching them? Do you just pick up the phone and call them and tell them that, hey, you know, I have a nice way? Or so what's, mm -hmm. what's the idea there? So those are my two questions. Very good. Very good question. Mainly to know the, your customer. This is really key because we were a bit confused at the beginning. And uh, our first customer, actually, because this will be a 10-year project before we have, uh, we have to do clinical trials. So uh, phase one, phase two, phase three, before having an FDA yeah. approval. So yeah. our customers, like the, the hospital, et cetera, would be only at the end. Right. The hospitals, this will be when we have the FDA approval. Our yeah. first customers right now, actually, are the pharma. You know, uh -huh. it's okay. the pharma industries and it's the, the, the research institute, because what we do now, for example, specifically for the pharma is to help them in their drug development. Um, they are developing different drugs targeting the brain, but they are not sure if these drugs are reaching the right receptor in their brain. So mm -hmm. for this, we don't need to go until the FDA approval. Actually, as soon as we demonstrate through phase one that um, the product is not toxic and etc., there is no um, there is no secondary um, symptom etc. For this, we can we can really sell it today to um, to um, to pharma or research institutions. So really, this is a really key question to know our customers because at first when we did our survey, we just did it to everybody who wants to do a medical diagnostic. But this would be in ten years our extended customers network. Okay. And, um, so this is a very good point. The first, the other thing is also to to talk about uh, the investor uh, acceptances uh, uh, based on um, on the product. Yes, it's it's a medical product, but it's a diagnostic uh, product, which is different from therapeutics. We are not changing anything in the brain. We are just visualizing what's happening in the brain. So the acceptance of also is very different. Basically, if you're doing diagnostic versus therapeutics, it's not we're not developing drugs. This is number one. So the main, and we actually we did not even have resistance on this. It was like a assumption that we thought we would have um, regarding the radioactivity on this place. But yeah. uh, we demonstrated that this radioactivity is more or less the same as taking a couple of flights, let's say from Zurich to New York, which is already people doing. 
And mm -hmm. for us, it's also very easy because this is not, um, it's not a new technology. What is new in our product, it's, it's the first time that it's reaching some brain receptors that could not be imaged before and that are believed to be linked to, to, um, to Alzheimer. But the technology itself is not new. Like we are not inventing the PET uh, imaging right. system and we are not in, uh, inventing the MRI, which are really heavily used for cancer uh, for now. So it's, it was quite accepted by the investors. All right, great. Thank you. All the best. Thanks. Wow, very, very insightful, really. Um, and we want to hear more. <laughs> Natalie, you have a question. Hi, yes. Um, hi, Avo. Thank you so much for your presentation. That was super helpful. Um, my question is, um, how would be the best way to study research the market, especially with surveys or interviewing people, um, without giving away your idea, but still have like made to make the the right questions and have meaningful data to build your product. Mm -hmm. The, the best way, basically, when you want to validate your idea is to test your assumptions. Because for your idea to work, you, you made a lot of assumptions and a lot of hypotheses. And talk to people about those assumptions and those hypotheses. Don't necessarily jump to the product itself. Actually, the product, you can talk about it at the latest, right? But uh, if you believe that, uh, I don't know, people prefer uh, uh, meat uh, versus veg veg vegetables, and because of that, you develop the product for meat. Just ask this question. Do you really prefer meat or vegetable? What would make you change from vegetarian to, to carnivore? Like I'm just making up ideas like this, but this is the thing. When you talk, don't talk about the final concept. Talk about all the context that you need in order for this uh, concept to be relevant. Just initiate the discussion and listen to what they say. Listen to... Um, because sometimes they can even give you more features or more more value proposition to what you already have. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Great, thank you. And Muriel is next. Hi, Awa. Thanks a lot for the very inspiring presentation. Yeah. I wondered when you finished the, camp, the Startup Campus course last year, did you all four still work? in another job and worked on the startup next to it, or did you go full in 100%? No, hi, Muriel, I recognize yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, actually, all my team colleagues were uh, still in the university and doing research. And me, a couple of months before I, I decided, I knew I would go on entrepreneurship, so I resigned from Accenture, and I gave myself one year sabbatical to explore my opportunities. Okay, so so it, it's, it was very good for us. So you financed yourselves either with the current jobs or you with your own money at the beginning? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, at the beginning. But it's not always the case. Huh? Most of the different colleagues that we are talking, they are, they, they could, you can still have a part-time job and this is totally accepted from investors as well. You can have your job and just say, as soon as we, we resemble enough funds to go on our own, we will, we will do it, basically. They understand. And most of it, if it is a, a team of students, they know that... Uh, uh, you cannot just uh, decide to go sabbatical. It doesn't work this way. So Great, they are very you. reasonable. Yeah, thanks a lot. You're welcome. All right, thanks. And then we have a very interesting question from Jessica. Hi, Awa. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I have a very specific question. So I saw at the beginning of your timeline that you your team had applied for patents um, with ETH because I'm assuming, um, yeah, because if your project initially came out of ETH and so mm -hmm. ETH applies for the patent, I believe. And I was reading online that then they owe, they own or they receive two thirds of the profits from the technology that is patented. How does Nemosia get around? Okay, so I no. guess I'll just finish the question. <laughs> I'm very interested to hear what you have to say. Um, I guess, how do you guys incorporate that into your business plan, these losses, so mm -hmm. to speak? It's, it's a very good point. Um, ultimately, ultimately, even though what you read is, is a little bit extreme, ultimately, ETH has all the advantage into promoting uh, ETH spin-off. 
it 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 give uh, recognition worldwide, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's 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 in their advantages to support you, and they are also there to support you. So, uh, but to go into detail, it's a negotiation. Um, when you're trying to have a license from ETH, you 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 go through what is called a term sheet, and they will first give you a proposition, but they they. I mean, two thirds. I have never heard this. This this seems a little bit exaggerated, and no one will create a company with a two third that just go to paying for patent. Um, they are quite reasonable most of the time if you come up with the right argumentation why you did it this way, and uh, and um, not to pay some some fees that could be hindering. But it's a negotiation, and you have to understand. This is why I was talking before to understand the, all the different uh, to build the business literacy. You have different options. Like um, you can you can have this term sheet or this agreement based on on uh, exchange of equity. That means they can have a little bit some shares. But it's it's I mean, it, from all I have heard, it's something below ten percent. Okay, of equity. From all I have heard, um, I cannot talk specifically about this because it's, as you can understand, this is confidential information. But you have different mechanism. It could be you can have like different milestone payment depending on when you reach different level of sales. Um, it could be a percentage like oh, minimum annual uh, fees that you have to pay. It's really a case by case, and there is not um, if if the business case is not is not making sense, both of you will lose. So it's really not in their advantage. One, one good thing that um, may be helpful, and this is what we did on our side, is we, um, we were glad, we were, happy, we were very uh, lucky to have also from our coaches, some lawyers who used to be working with uh, Itihad Transfer. So all this discussion, we had the proper supports. Because just as a student, you don't necessarily know what to avoid, what to look for, except we don't know. We never had this training, we, like we just don't know. So make use of all the resource, like the coach, the advisor that you have, and they will give you proper feedback on, on this and what it means and what are the future impact on the, um, on the uh, contract you are signing, basically, what it means. And, and discuss it until you both, okay. both sides find agreement. Okay, thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Yeah, and just to mention, this is the kind of knowledge, of course, that you can't just read in a book. Mm -hmm. um, you need to have access to the right people. And that's why, yeah, that's the feedback that we get from the participants of Venture Kick, for example. They've benefited so much from talking to investors who have been through these negotiations over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And obviously, they will never publicly talk about their insights, their learnings. But when they're working with you, then they'll be obviously much more open uh, because they want to help you. Yeah. OK, um, Maxwell, you have a question. Yes. Hi, Awa. Uh, Hi. During that uh, development phase, uh, when you receive this uh, academic grants and, and also during this coaching event, uh, have you at some point diluted some companies' equities for some services as a kind of compensation? Mm -hmm. um, basically, it, like at the moment, since we haven't found it yet, we cannot really talk about dilution. But uh, technically, what, what happens, you can have convertible loans. That means you would have funding now that they will give you money now. And then once you will go through your financing round, once the company is created, et cetera, you would have uh, either, it, it can come in different forms. It, you can have either a discount or some interest rate on it or a specific percentage of the shares, yes. Okay, is it something that you can kind of negotiate too? Yes, yes, yes. The same, like all of this sounds the same way, for example, with ETH, you have a term sheet. With your uh, potential investor also, you would have a term sheet to discuss these convertible loans. And um, it, you, you, would, you would need this anyway, even um, from, your, from the business angels, you know, the early supporters. It's not just they throw you money and believe in you. I, I mean, I think for us and for the company also, it's fair to give something back for the early supporters. Um, but you have to find what is comfortable for both of you. But yes, it's a negotiation. 
So you have to start getting <laughs> up to skill on negotiation skill because this, this will be at every corner. Great, thank you. Okay, Priscilla, you have a question. Hi, Alva. Hi. Hi. Um, thank you for your uh, sharing. It's very precious to us. I'm, I want to know if, um, are you planning to make another uh, kind of product or other kind of uh, brain tracking, uh, taking advantage of all this environment and experience for seeing better other ways or other goals of the brain? Yes. Yes, we are. Basically, we, we, what our ultimate objective is to be a platform for developing tracers. Uh, because this is a core expertise of our team. And uh, we do have a pipeline for other tracers. We are focusing on the first one who is the, the most ready to be commercialized today. And uh, the ideas that we have or the, the approach that we have would be from this first tracer uh, revenue to also in reinvest back and develop further tracers. Yes. Great, thank you. I'll get in touch with you then. <laughs> You're most welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Asia, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Uh, you have a question? Yes, that was close enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm a foreigner here that came to Zurich to study, and now I'm considering doing a, a startup at some point once I finish. And then my question is a bit how doable is this without knowing the local language? So, without knowing German in Zurich, for example, is English enough or is this not the case? Well, first, Zurich is very international. Well, Switzerland also is very, like, not all Switzerland, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but Zurich, Geneva is very international. So my, my Deutsch is nicht sehr gut, huh? but, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, business language is English in general, but sometimes some of the legal things and the, the law governing the, the business creation is in German if you create it in Zurich. So you have to be aware of this. You can have some translation, et cetera, but uh, to access the, the investors and to, uh, or your client, et cetera, depending on the project you might do, it's very, like most of the company here are actually quite global, um, specifically in the pharma industry, which I can talk about. It, it's, we never had like a language uh, barrier, but think of having somebody in your team <laughs> Who is, who is also lo local, like um, our co-founders, we come all from different background, like from, from Singapore, me, uh, we have one from Egypt, we have, uh, but we do have one of the core researchers who, who is Swiss and from Zurich. So this, this helps. Okay, thanks a lot. And maybe a second quick question I had. Uh, if you would recommend any book to get familiar with the business and financial part of, of the business basically because i think more at least in my case i'm more of a technical person so uh, oh, yes i will send it afterwards <laughs> i have one that i learned the the beaba if you say um, okay. oh god and if only one book that would be the, the okay maybe just before the end i will go and grab it and show it to you <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you. Type. but but yes i just i, I just have a blank Okay, I'll, I'll come back to you. Oh, ping me, ping me later. You can write me later and I can send it yeah. to you after. Let's do Okay, this. thanks. Okay, um, we are running out of time. Uh, Awa, you said yesterday you have like five or 10 extra minutes. Is that, is that correct? I wanted to do a small quiz if, if you wanted, just to, to have some fun. Um, so just, yeah, and just yeah. if we get to it, there are two yeah. more questions, but oh. I'm, I'm going to close the question round now. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so, so th thank you. Yeah, let's, let's do the quiz. That's, that's interesting. And for any question, guys, lately, feel, feel free to reach out. Huh? Like mm -hmm. I was like you before, and I had the chance to be able to talk to other people. It's a community. It's really mindset of entrepreneur, and you can ask anybody. Yeah. So if, if you just, I have maybe two or three questions just for you to get familiarized with all this different uh, terminology. So what do you think here would be the four main type? And it could be multiple choice or single choice. So I'm not giving any, any further view. Just, you can just write it in the chat. What's your thought?
I give set. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, yes. Well, the 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 there are two actually the two most um main main group that is mostly available well to to early stage is A and B. I would just go quickly because I see you also question. What do you think is a business angel? Yeah, you all get it right. <laughs> Talking about delicious, do you know do you know what it means? It was a question I said we had this question before, I think Maxwell well, you ask. Huh? Here is the right answer. So good, it was just, these are the things that you need to start getting used to. And um, yeah, as if you write, I will, I, will, uh, I will send you back the book name, but yeah, that's it. I just had this couple of questions. I don't want to take more of the time. So uh, back to you, Rafael. Yeah, sure. Um, and I know that some of you need to leave the room um, soon. I would just like to have a quick um, poll and then we can address any further questions if, if you can stay five or ten um, more minutes. Uh, so uh, just get this going here. So um, I'd be very happy if you could give us some feedback, because obviously um, we want to run more of these sessions and we want to know how useful they are. So many thanks for all your votes. I'll give you 10 more seconds. Okay, let's close it with that. Thank you. So back to the questions. Um, just quickly see who... Mark, you had a question. Are you still there? Um, yes, I am. Yeah. Uh, so basically, um, yeah, the the pitching decks um, for investors uh, is there like a preferred template that is uh, used that the venture lab um, suggests? Um, it's, they, they, it's not necessarily um, a, a specific template, but you have to make sure in your presentation that you address uh, specific questions. I know there are though like. Okay, first you have to address a um, couple of questions. What do you do? Um, how would you make money out of it? Who are your customers? And um, how do you stand versus competition, really? What's the innovative idea out of it? And, and why would people take your product today or buy your product today versus what is existing right now? <laughs> and Rafael, I think you... you I, but, but I do think there is a database of, yeah. of a template or example. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'd, be, that'd be interesting. How, how do you get to the database? So, Mark, if you want, um, just write me later, either an email or on LinkedIn, and yeah. I can send you the PDF. And whoever, uh, yeah, else, yeah. whoever else wants to have this, um, like it's like 10 slides that are best to address yeah and like and so like 15 minute presentation time that type of thing yeah yeah great good okay. and last question by jean hello thank you so it, it was very interesting thanks a lot and my question is 
when you're talking to investors, they often want to hear numbers about the market. Now, sometimes it's not as easy to give those numbers. And I think you maybe uh, struggled with that as well. You mentioned that you uh, hired experts to do market research. Mm -hmm. What was your experience with that? And did it help with pitching to investors? Yes. So basically, we, we hired from the from the fund that we have won on the venture kick competition phase one. We hired um, expert here from from Switzerland to do a desk research for the market sizing. Um, and just the fact that you put fund to do this uh, speak great words to investors, because they will do also their own due diligence. Huh? They they whatever you will tell them, they will cross check it anyway if they are uh, in, in a position to give money. Um, and the other thing is sometimes very, at this very early stage, you, you don't have this information. You don't have these numbers. What they will check is how you, how you build it up. For example, we are doing radio tracer to, for early diagnostic. Uh, one thing could have been for us at the beginning just to say, okay, imagine this is a cancer. This is for a breast cancer. They have X many um, X-ray being done in prevention, and this is for half of the population. So if you do it in our case, it would be for both men and, and, uh, and women. So we can multiply the number by two. So it's just to see your reasoning and, and how you build your, your logic. And it has to make sense. Just don't, don't invent number out of nowhere because this will dis, dis, uh, credibilize you. Is it English? Well, anyway, this will be discrediting you. <laughs> I think that's the proper word. Um, you can take similar industry or similar product from other, other, uh, other industry and build the same logic for something that has already existed and you will fine tune because at the beginning you don't know and they know that you don't know. So don't even try to pretend that you know. Okay, thanks a lot. Rafael, you wanted to add something? Yeah, no, 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 it was really, it was but, really right. Yeah. Hey, Thank you so much for the session, Awa. It was it was wonderful. Um, and thank you to everybody who, who joined. It's been a pleasure uh, for me as well. And yeah, uh, if we if you want to stay in touch, if you if you want to uh, benefit from other things that um, that give you the access to, to the knowledge or the funding, here are once again the web addresses. Take a pen and note them down. One of the things I would recommend um, is that you subscribe to the email list where you get early notifications about all the upcoming events um, available to you. You can, you can sign up at venturelab.ch slash Swiss Startup Insights. Yeah, that, that way you won't miss anything. And then obviously um, get familiar with the, the Gebert Ruf Foundation programs. Um, you find all of them at the grstiftung.ch website. Or when it's specific about VentureKick, go to venturekick.ch. And you saw that our was open uh, she was inviting you uh, to write her if you have questions. Uh, so thank you very much, Awa. Uh, so when you are when you're close to submitting your application, yeah, um, hi I highly recommend you check out um, the, the other startups who have already also applied for Venture Kick and reach out to the founders. Um, it's it's easy to find out. You go on the VentureKick.ch website. You search for startups. Um, and then you find out who's the CEO. They are all on LinkedIn and they are very approachable. They want to help you, yeah? And then you get like feedback from two or three other founders and then you submit the, the application, yeah? And obviously, if you are on campus at ETH, uh, definitely check out ETH Student Project House, ETH Entrepreneur Club and the Unicron Labs. It's not just about the events, it's, it's about the network. It's about the people you, you meet there. And I, just to add one observation, because I'm not Swiss, I think I, think I, can, I can say that with some neutrality as well. 
Um, I think what's great in Switzerland is that the, the level of trust. Yeah, you can trust people so well here in the in the startup community, and that makes it so much easier to build corporations. Um, so take advantage of the network that you can build here. And yeah, obviously, um, incorporate your company in Switzerland, go nowhere else. Thank you very much for, for this venture briefing and uh, have a wonderful day. See you soon. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Raphael.